All right, hello, ladies and gentlemen of the internet, including those few who wish to sacrifice their souls to run any percent. Uh, I am Gymnast86, and today I'm going to be giving you guys a tutorial on how to perform the door clip to get into the Forsaken Fortress 2 loading zone at the top, uh, which allows us to enter the Helmrock fight early and do the early Master Sword sequence break. Uh, it's pretty useful for any percent. Uh, the early Master Sword sequence break itself saves about a half hour for any percent. Uh, and the door clip saves around five minutes over the old method for early Master Sword that we used to do. Uh, this door is locked when we come to it, because normally you need the skull hammer to push down this peg uh, to be able to open this door, but we can't get the skull hammer. And the reason for that is because we don't have the Master Sword. We have the Hero's Sword at this point. Uh, normally you'd get the Skull Hammer from Phantom Ganon, but because uh, Phantom Ganon, or damaging Phantom Ganon requires you to have the Master Sword, because you can't damage Phantom Ganon with the Hero Sword. It's a weird check they have, but it's what we have to deal with. Uh, so anyway, the first part of this trick actually isn't going to involve the door at all. It's actually going to involve uh, the Phantom Ganon cutscene skip that you have to do to get over here. And for this, I'm actually going to switch over to uh, my PV video to describe what's going on here. So, basically there's a trigger uh, for Phantom Ganon about right here-ish, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna be charging up an item slide right here that will sort of partially clip through this wall so that we can avoid this trigger right here and not spawn Phantom Ganon. Because if we spawn Phantom Ganon, we end up uh, getting taken down all the way to the bottom of Forsaken Fortress and having to watch this dumb cutscene. Uh, and you also can't really do the door clip while Phantom Ganon is trying to attack you because he's trying to attack you and this uh, it can like mess up your angle and stuff while you're trying to do it. So to start, uh, you want Link's feet to sort of be straddling this line right here uh, for like the beginning position. And then you're also going to want to turn off uh, the gyro controls for the game if you're using gyro controls because this trick uh, requires getting a precise lineup. So after you do that, you want to take out the grapple hook, and uh, there's going to be this line right here uh, on this like wall, and what you want to do is you want to put this uh, sort of gray-black line just outside the edge of the screen. So as I lined up here, advancing frame by frame, I slowly sort of shifted until I saw that it was all the way off screen. I shifted around a little bit more. But pretty much, uh, once I got my angle with this off screen, I moved to the right a little bit uh, so that I have space to begin moving left and begin my item slide. Uh, the reason we need this precise angle right here uh, is because uh, we're going to be charging up with this angle and then we're going to be pressing ZL. And when you press ZL or target after you've charged up a lot of speed with the grapple hook, uh, Link is going to shoot to the left. And the velocity that we get with this angle uh, shooting to the left is going to allow us to get past the Phantom Ganon trigger. So for this item slide, um, generally you're going to hold, you're, you're going to start walking left, and then you're going to want to hold ESS right, which is, as you can see on the controller up here, just very slightly right off the center of the dead zone. And that will begin your item slide. Uh, this item slide is kind of tricky because you have a very narrow space to work with down here on the floor. Uh, so you could either end up falling forward, which is a mistake, uh, but it's a better mistake to make than um, being or going too far back and like landing in the uh, Phantom Ganon cutscene trigger. So it could take some time to get used to uh, being able to like stay on this little platform. But you'll notice that this reticle, as you're item sliding, it sort of like bounces a little bit. Uh, what I wait for when doing this item slide is I wait for the red reticle to bounce three times before I press ZL. So I think that was two times. Oh, no, okay, so that was the third one. So after I see the red reticle bounce three times, uh, I let go of the control stick and I hold ZL or just tap it. Doesn't really matter. Uh, and this will shoot Link off to the left. So now he's traveling along the wall. He goes, and now we're past the trigger. Uh, so once you're past the trigger, you'll like slide up the stairs. From there, you just want to cancel the item slide uh, by like rolling or whatever. And then now we get to the actual door clip part. 
So we'll switch back over. Game. All right, so uh, the way the door clip actually works is that we get we get a lot of speed going sort of like this, and we're just kind of sliding into this corner right here. And what actually happens is that at a very precise speed, uh, Link is going to clip into the ground for one frame, but the game will still consider him to be in a grounded state. So uh, the frame after he clips into the ground, he's going to shoot to the right again, uh, because our speed is going into the corner, but when he's under the ground, uh, there's no collision to his right, so he just goes that way. And what's going to happen is Link is actually going to collide with a really small door that's under this door. It's just kind of like floating under there. Uh, the reason for that is because all of these big doors at Forsaken Fortress are just kind of... Uh, extensions of like the regular door object. It's just like how they decided to make them. And it's convenient because it means that this trick works. <laughs> so yeah, Link will collide with the door and then after that happens uh, you need to do a jump slash because like you'll be you'll be right under the loading zone and doing a jump slash will give you the extra height you need uh, to get into the loading zone. And so this trick requires somewhat of a precise angle to work. Uh, the way that you can get the angle that works is you can climb up this ledge, target, and then drop off, which will give you a consistent angle. Uh, just side hop over here, place down a bomb in front of you, and then while holding target, press B to blow it up. Uh, this will change Link's angle to be facing slightly more to the left, and this is uh, the angle we want. Uh, placing down the bomb and blowing it up won't give you a consistent angle, like every single time, but all of the angles that it does give are within the range that uh, make the door clip work. So you have this angle, you have gyro turned off, because we don't want the angle changing while we have the grapple hooked out, right? And so now that we have this angle, um, what we're going to want to do is we're going to charge up an item slide forward, and then we want our speed right now to go uh, perpendicular to the right of where Link is facing. Uh, the problem with this is that whenever you tap ZL, uh, if you item slide with the grapple hook, Link shoots to the left. And so, left is not right, obviously. Um, but if we hold forward during the item slide, uh, like right before we press ZL, Link's speed will go positive, and then holding ZL will actually make Link go to the right instead of the left with all his speed. Uh, but the problem with that is that this clip in the corner right here will only work if Link has negative speed. If Link has negative speed, yes. It will not work if Link has positive speed. I don't know why that is, but that's just how it works. And sort of like another note is that if Link is facing 180 degrees the opposite direction, the clip will only work with positive speed and not negative speed. So I, I don't know why that is, I just know that that's what we're dealing with here. So, right, um, the precise speed that we need for this clip to work is roughly negative uh, 2,850. So, let's just get that speed real quick. I have the uh, data viewer open so that I can see exactly what my speed is. Alright, so my speed's pretty high, and it's positive right now, but I'm going uh, into the corner. Uh, if you target while you're trying to make your speed go down, because the speed's not going to work, or, the, sorry, the clip won't work at higher speeds, so if you want to make your speed go down faster, uh, you're going to want to hold ZL, because as you can see, my rate of speed decrease is now much faster. Okay, so now, once you're in this corner, uh, having done your item slide forward, um, pressed forward on the analog stick, and then held ZL so that Link shoots to the right instead of the left. Um, you're going to need to hold directly left, or nearly directly left, uh, on the control stick right here. Uh, doing this while holding ZL will make Link's speed shift from positive to negative, and once again, we need negative speed to make the clip work. So, you have... Um, obviously, there are no notches on the Wii U gamepad or the Pro Controller. Uh, there are some third-party pro controllers that have notches, but I haven't done any testing with those. Uh, but obviously, because we have no notches, uh, holding directly left is obviously a bit of a challenge. Uh, that's really the main hard part of this trick, is being able to hold directly left on the analog stick. You do have a little bit of leniency, 
uh, as you can see, like the number on the right of the stick right here is 128. 128 just means that it's like perfectly um, horizontal uh, in its orientation. Uh, you have between, I believe it was 130 uh, and 126 to make this work. So you don't have a lot of leniency, but you do have some. You don't need to hold directly left. But anyway, uh, when you pause and hold ZL and directly left and then unpause, you'll notice that Link's feet sort of like, or that Link's like body sort of, uh, sort of shifted position uh, to account for the now negative speed. And so now, like I said earlier, the precise speed that we need for this clip to work is negative 2850 roughly. It's not exactly that. Sometimes it happens higher, sometimes it happens lower. Uh, it just all depends on what your precise speed is at that point. So I'm just going to kind of pause as we get down here. Oh, and before I forget, uh, make sure that when you're in this corner with all your speed, uh, that you put away the grapple hook and draw your sword uh, to prepare for the jump slash that you need to do. Because if you don't have the sword out, then doing the jump slash on the first possible frame is going to take longer because um, Link has to actually pull the sword out first. So make sure you put away the grapple hook and take your sword out. Okay, so uh, this right here is what you're looking for. We're looking for the frame where Link uh, goes underground. And so right now, Link hasn't gone under the loading zone behind the door yet. He's still just underground. Um, after the next frame, he's going to collide with the smaller door under the bigger door, and then we'll be in position to do the jump slash we want to do. Um, I should mention right now with this trick that sometimes the jump slash, even if you do it as fast as possible, simply won't work because Link's height can kind of vary for this trick when he does the clip, and sometimes it's just too low for the jump slash to give you enough height. Or, yeah, for the jump slash to give you enough height up to the loading zone. Uh, but on this grounded frame where you're uh, under the ground, um, the first frame you actually get up, or not, not the first frame, get up, the first frame you unpause, uh, you can actually do a side hop and then do a jump slash, which will almost always give you enough height uh, to make it into the loading zone. Uh, sometimes with this clip, though, uh, Link actually won't go under the ground enough to bypass the collision of the door right now. So, for instance, if he just pops back up, uh, that means that he didn't go under the ground enough and that you're just going to have to redo the item slide. But for this, like, unpause right here, I like to do a home buffer so that I can see which frame after the unpause that I get. So if I do this... Okay, so that frame right there where the pause was completely gone, uh, that was the second frame of input uh, after the unpause. So by now, uh, Link will have Link has gone fully under the door, and if you get that frame, you can just hold B to do a jump slash after you uh, press the home menu one more time. And you'll get in like that. Uh, the frame before that, um, there's one frame where if you unpause and then press home quickly enough, uh, the pause, like the orange pause layover, will sort of be extremely uh, transparent, almost like fully transparent, but not quite. If you get that frame, um, then that's the frame that where when you unpause or like uh, click the home menu to get, to get back into the game, uh, you're going to want to hold ZL, right, and A to do a side hop, and then press B about a second later to do a jump slash. Uh, that's pretty much like the safe uh, way to do this if you can get that frame because you can still do the trick correctly. Because if you don't hold directly left or within the range that I specified um, on the control stick, Link will actually like bypass the door completely and he'll usually end up like out here-ish. And so even if you, like if you were to get out here, if you kept going, uh, doing the side hop jump slash, um, like it doesn't matter if you would have ended out here because the side hop jump slash stops you um, under the door, because obviously a side hop's not going to carry all the way over here. 
yeah, that's why holding directly left is important. If you don't hold directly left, uh, you'll basically just go through the entire wall and end up, like, near the stairs. And I guess in regards to health, like, if, you, if you're trying this a lot and your health is going down, uh, these skulls will usually have at least one heart in them. Uh, so you can pick that up if you end up getting a little low. Alright, so I did mention that um, if you want to do the side hop jump slash uh, into this door, uh, you'd want to see the frame where the pause, like the orange pause layover, is almost near transparent after unpausing. I think I did that in my PB. Okay, so as I saw right there, um, I went under the ground, so I'm getting ready to home buffer. Uh, when I home buffered this time, uh, yeah, so this is what the pause menu looks like if you get the frame right before the one that I just showed you in this tutorial, which is like where there's no pause layover. Uh, but if you get this frame right here, uh, you can home buffer in the side hop jump attack to get into the loading zone, as I did right here. And then make your way in. So yeah, now I'm going to explain sort of the problem with speed that we have. So, as I mentioned earlier, this clip only works at a very precise speed, neg roughly negative 200 or negative 2850. And so the problem with that is that item sliding uh, builds up speed exponentially very quickly. So trying to hit a consistent speed like that isn't really possible. Um, so each of the runners who plays this game right now will use um, a metronome actually to try and charge the item slide up the correct amount of time. The settings for the metronome that I use is I use a metronome at 150 BPM or beats per minute. And pretty much from the moment I pause, um, I unpause on one beat and then uh, two, or three beats later, uh, I will press ZL to cancel my speed from going any farther. So like, one, two, three, four, like that, if that makes any sense. And so then from here, uh, I'd have to hold directly left on the control stick. Uh, and then from here, unfortunately, uh, the, like, the reason we pause so much is because we have to keep on pausing to um, like see when we clip under the door, because we have no idea what our speed is right now in runs. So the unfortunate part about this is that you just have to keep on pausing uh, until you get down to the speed that you want to be at. So just keep on pausing, it'll eventually happen. Okay, so um, right there, I'm not sure if you noticed, but I did go under the ground, but the camera also shifted to the right, which means that... Um, I'm not, like, in the grounded state under the floor. I've actually gone past that, and so now I'm at the I'm at the door itself. Uh, so the first frame out of this pause, I'd want to do a jump slash. So let's see. All right, so that was the second frame, but if I hold B, I should get in. Yeah. All right, so I had enough height to do it that time. Uh, once again, sometimes you won't even have enough height for the clip uh, to make it in, even if you jump slash on the first possible frame. Uh, but, yeah. I hope that helps explain the door clip for you guys. Um, I did kind of go into this tutorial assuming that you knew how item sliding worked, and that you're at least somewhat familiar with it, which I'd hope you would be by getting to this point in any percent. Uh, but yeah. So if you guys have any more questions about how to execute the door clip, um, I guess you can put them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Uh, I'll also link um, a tutorial on how to get this data viewer working so you can, like, see your speed and angle and everything. Well, speed is the only important thing. And seeing if you can hold directly left uh, on the control stick, because obviously doing that is kind of difficult. Uh, but yeah, once you've done that, you can just go into the loading zone and continue on with the any percent route. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope this helped some of you brave souls who are going to run any percent in the future. And goodbye.